Hey guys, come on in to one of my garden spots. Today is the 4th of July, so happy 4th of July. And the 4th of July is one of two days a year I plant pumpkins. I plant them on Memorial Day and I made a video of that. That has something to do with um, my, my service in Iraq and those who didn't make it home. That's a whole story in and of itself. But I plant on the 4th of July because basically early July is your last opportunity to plant pumpkins that will uh, be ready to harvest in time for Halloween. Most pumpkins, depending upon the type of pumpkin, take at least 90 to 110 days to mature and be ready for harvest. So if you're looking at the 1st of July, you've got all of July, August, September, that's 90 days. So then October, uh, October 10, October 15, you're looking at 110 days, 115 days. So it, July is your last best time to do this. So what I'm doing, um, just to explain here, in this garden, we don't have the best soil. We have a couple different garden spots. Our best garden's down there. I mean, you drop a seed in that soil and boom, it just grows like crazy because we used to keep our rabbits there. Um, the soil is very fertile, very rich. Not so much in this garden. We're working on it. It's a work in progress. One of the things we're doing to enrich the soil is we're bringing soil that's already enriched into this garden spot. We have a spot up on the hill where we get black gold, which you know is uh, oak leaf mold. Um, and then we have a stream down here that uh, feeds our pond where there's a lot of siltish type soil that's high in nutrients. So here's what I've done. The soil is so poor here that we actually planted some peppers, two different types of peppers here that just didn't grow. The weeds grew. So I've cut down the weeds and I'm going to bring soil. It's going, to, it's going to take several hours. This video is probably only, only going to be about 8 or 12 minutes long because we're going to do a lot of splicing, a lot of editing. But over the next two or three hours, despite the fact that it's the 4th of July, and I have water that I put in the freezer last night because I always know the day before what I'm going to do on the homestead the next day. I'm going to drink this down in today's heat. Um, but I'm going to transfer rich soil to my not-so-rich soil garden, and I'm going to make mounds uh, to plant my pumpkins. So that's what we're doing, and I'm going to take this phone real quick from the most beautiful woman in the world, my wife, and if you don't believe me, go look at some of our videos she's in and you'll agree with me. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. But I want to give you an update on a couple things. Just three days ago, we made a video on how to uh, grow cucumbers. I want to say pepino because that's what we called them for years in the Philippines. Pepinos, cucumbers, using the feng shui method of letting the vines go where they want. It, three days ago, we had no vegetables on, or we had no cucumbers on these vines. Look at this. Three days later, that thing is huge. It's fat. We got some little ones here. And my wife later, here's a big one. Make sure to check back with us later because she's going to make a video showing how she makes this wonderful Filipino cucumber salad that we lived off of over there for years. Because, you know, every day summer, it's tropical. You can grow year-round. Look at this one. Three days. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna give this back to the most beautiful woman in the world. And uh, with no further ado, I'm gonna go get some soil and we're gonna get started planting our pumpkins. Hey guys, welcome to our version of Mesopotamia here on our property. We have three water sources coming together to join right here. We have a creek here. There's a creek over in the woods there that actually comes in down here below this old uh, well pump down here below me. And then we have a third water source back here. It's basically another natural spring that shoots water out of it when it rains hard. But they all come together bringing in silt, all kinds of nutrients and nourishment to this part of our property. And you can see the soil here is very rich, very dark. The soil up there where we're growing our pumpkins in that garden is like a light brown, which means it's kind of thirsty and hungry for nutrients. So we're going to take it up there. And I mean, these things are all over the place. Guys, when you're digging soil and you find an earthworms, that means it's very good soil. Now there's gonna be worm castings in here. So now we're gonna start the long, arduous process of dragging this soil to the garden. Okay, so you're probably wondering, why is that guy using a sled to get soil? Well, am I cheap? No, but am I thrifty? Yes. See these sleds? We buy a lot of our stuff at Kroger, a common uh, grocery store on the East Coast. These are like 15 bucks in the month of December. They have them every year. Well, if you wait until February, you can usually get three for 10. They make excellent uh, wagons or uh, wheelbarrows for the farm, and three for $10 is $3.33 versus 100 bucks for a wheelbarrow. But now, dirt's heavy. 
okay, especially this moist soil from our Mesopotamia Creek area. I drag it over to where it's going with my lawn tractor. I just use the rope that's on the sled and I hook a, one of these tie downs on here. I make sure to secure it. And I don't need no $60,000 John Deere on my homestead. I use an $1,100 Troy belt mower. So we got the soil over here where we want it. So I'm going to drag it in to the garden. Come on with me into the garden. And now I'm just going to start dumping my soil here. Now, look at this. You getting a good shot of that, honey? Are you close enough? Come on in closer. Let's, let's give them a really nice view. Look at this soil versus this soil. This soil, now this is dry, so it's not an apples to apples comparison, but even if we wet it down, and which I'm gonna do because we want this to be an apples to apples if we can. Get some water on here. Um, you can tell this is almost black. Look at these worms. I mean, guys, this is a great sign of great soil, okay? And we've got some clay and some sand in here. Just a nice mixture. We've got the decaying oak leaves in here. Over here, I mean, it's like almost clayish, lighter brown, a lighter color, less nutrients. So I'm gonna spend the next however long it takes, probably an hour to an hour and a half, bringing load after load after load of soil from our Mesopotamia area to here so we can plant our, our uh, pumpkins. I'm gonna let the most beautiful woman in the world go inside and stay where it's cool. And once I get some soil over here, we'll be right back. Hey guys. I'm adding another step that I almost left out, so I wanted to come back to you quicker than I thought and show you this. You might remember I demonstrated to you earlier in the year the double dig, uh, no-till garden tilling method, how to till a garden without a tiller. I'm going to implement part of that strategy here. It just occurred to me that one sled load worth of soil is going to be just about enough soil for my perfect pumpkin mound. Well, the seeds will sprout and they'll start growing really good in this soil, but once they get down to this, they're going to hit a solid object and they're not going to do so well. So what I'm going to do is, before I put every mound of my fertile soil down, is I'm just going to take my shovel, and just like with the double dig no-till garden method, I'm not going to remove an entire shovel's worth of soil and set it aside and then loosen up the soil beneath it. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to loosen up the top like this, because this is the soil that will be beneath that soil. So this way, here in about uh, three or four weeks, as the roots make their way through this very rich soil, they're not going to hit solid ground and then become stunted. They're going to hit well broken up now. So you see how I've done that? It's nice and loose, but still this soil is not that fertile, but at least now it's not hard. It's broken up, it's soft, the roots will be able to get through there. Then I'm going to take my and now when I do the next mound, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and loosen up this soil here and then just dump my next sled of fertile soil on top of it so I don't have to move the soil twice. Remember, work smart, not hard. Do it right, and then you do it once. So this is going to be our first pumpkin mound right here on the right where I'm continuing to add this. And guys, there are so many worms in here. I could go fishing all day with the worms that were just in here. You're not seeing them all from that angle and that distance, but I mean, they're just everywhere crawling around. They're dark. They're blending in with the soil. I mean, I mean, there are freaking dozens of them. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is before I go and get the next mounted soil is I'm going to break up this ground, which as you can see is very hard. So I'm going to do it just like I did there. And you watched our video on which, which yard tool or gardening tool works for which muscle part. You'll know I'm getting one heck of a leg workout right here doing this. 
and be careful guys I mean you see me bouncing up and down on this shovel like a trampoline I do this all the time if you're kind of new to this or you don't do it as often as I do remember henai henai slow and easy nothing out here is worth getting hurt over and now this soil look how solid and nasty and poor nutrients that is no wonder our peppers didn't grow but now this is broken up so now I'm gonna head back over to the creeks get another sled load I'm gonna put it right here then when our pumpkins start sprouting and the roots start growing they're gonna be able to get through this easy see I can stick I can go down there almost up to my wrist so time to get more soil hey guys so here we are about an hour and a half later and I made 13 trips to the creek and back with 13 sled loads of very fertile soil my beautiful bride who's recording this now um, jumped in to help you saw how I was breaking up the soil underneath the mounds she did that while I was getting uh, the soil and remember those who homestead together stay together so now and, and it's overcast now this is crazy we might have a thunderstorm coming in for the last hour and a half while I was doing this there were no clouds and the Sun was beating down on me and it was like 95 degrees whatever it is what it is um, I want to show you a couple of interesting finds I made in our creek honey let's give them a close-up here I dug up a couple things uh, the way the soil worked over there was that we had about six inches of uh, siltish topsoil then it was about six inches of sand and then I hit about six inches of clay this was in the uh, sandy part about six inches in it underneath the uh, topsoil if anybody watching this has any idea what era this might be from um, please let me know you probably in the comment section you probably noticed in the earlier part of the video there was an old well house up there we have reason to believe there was an old home place up there but we don't know uh, we're in Albemarle County I was going to kind of give that away here in a second anyway <laughs> Virginia but uh, we're just a couple maybe three hours away from Jamestown so we know the Europeans were settling here more than 400 years ago and we just have no idea how long people was here even before that but here's my second find I'm gonna spit on this and rub off some of the dirt but this is really interesting I went inside and googled this after finding this this is an old broken coca-cola bottle it was about eight inches beneath the surface and I'm gonna bring it up close you see on the bottom there it says Charlottesville Virginia don't move don't move okay yeah, so that we can you got it just so I'll talk about this yeah. while she's getting it. Um, Charlottesville, Virginia. There's an old Coca-Cola bottling uh, works place down there that today is a restaurant. So I went in and Googled this so I could give you some facts about this. Um, it was a bottling center built in 1939 that was uh, in production until 1973, which ironically is the year I was born. I was born in 73. So I know this bottle was made at some point from 1973 or before. So I'm holding a broken Coca-Cola bottle in my hand that is at least as old as I am, and I'm 44. It's probably older. It was well preserved because it was buried under about eight inches of soil in our creek. Um, today, it's on 10th Street. If you're familiar with Charlottesville, it's a little shortcut from West Main Street over to the Barracks Road section of town. You can drive by there, you see the old building. It's like a restaurant or a coffee shop or something now. It says Coca-Cola Bottling Works. But that's where this came from and it's been buried up here in my creek for who knows how long now I've got my mounds my soils broken up underneath them so the roots will be able to penetrate that soil when they grow and I'm gonna plant some jack-o-lanterns just plain pumpkin jack-o-lantern and some caspers these are not the white luminids they're kind of like a bluish whitish but these are both pretty pumpkins um, I counted the seeds I mixed them together in a cup and counted them I have 39 seeds or 40 39 40 seeds and I have 13 mounts So 13 the you, know, you do the math and basically it calls for three seeds per mound so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in three seeds per mound I'm going to do you want to bury them about an inch half an inch to an inch deep and again it's the 4th of July so yeah I read the back of those packages, and ironically it said just what I told you at the beginning of the video um, one of these takes 90 days until it's ready to harvest and the other takes 110 or something like that so by the first or second week of October these things are going to be ready to go and they're going to be ready to be carved into the perfect jack-o-lantern now that's trusting all goes well and we're going to have to get out here and water this we're in the summer months 
Um, Hun, you miss it. What did I miss? Oh, I didn't bury, see? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna move this glass here in just a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and plant here because I, I can't skip a part of a row. If I do, I'll never replant it. And I wonder why my pumpkins never came up. And as far as this thing, giving away our location, if this hat hasn't done it, which I've worn in like every other video we've ever made, then you've not been paying attention to detail. But anyway, this is all I'm doing. I'm going through, I'm planting these about an inch deep. I'm spacing them out evenly on the mounds. Now I'm gonna do the rest here after we finish recording. But you get the gist of it. Um, so if you're into Halloween, if you're into pumpkins, you want the perfect jack-o'-lantern, the latest in the year in which you uh, can do that is, well, and it depends on where you are. We're in Virginia, zone seven. So if you're in the mid-Atlantic region, um, it's gotta be by July. If you're further north of here, like if you're Pennsylvania, New York, that area, you probably, you might be past your point. Then of course, if you're South Carolina, uh, Georgia, Florida, going west, you can probably put it off a little bit longer. Um, a week or two only because of course, Halloween's on October 31st. So you might be able to grow pumpkins that are ready to harvest the end of November, but you, you missed it by a month. So we're gonna plant the rest of this. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope this gave you a really good idea on how to plant your pumpkins. We hope you learned something from it. If you did, please subscribe to our channel, Homesteading Off The Grid, and we'll see you next time.